Pickles, Stourbridge and Gwent. But first, looking for happiness on the other side of the world here on BBC One. If finding the love of your life had taken longer than expected and led to heartbreak as well as happiness, you could be yearning for a fresh start. But how far would you go to achieve your happy ever after? For one couple, it could mean a move to the other side of the world. Debbie and Lee Daniels have faced more heartache than most. Our lives haven't gone the way we thought it would. Everyone else around us seems to be getting the dream that we haven't got. Now the couple are seeking a clean slate in New Zealand. I'm really positive my bags are almost packed and, uh, yeah, I'm here. But when confronted with leaving behind everything they love... So we could basically throw away all of this. No, you're getting stroppy. Will they stand by the dream or decide home is where the heart is? Oh, we're escaping. Are we just running away? the world over for its scenic diversity, New Zealand boasts spectacular geographic backdrops from beaches to rainforests and active volcanoes. And now, after decades of immigration, its population is as diverse as the landscape. With three quarters of its four and a half million residents of European descent, it seems the sky's the limit in the country often referred to as land of the long white cloud. Having put life on hold to help her widowed mum bring up her two younger sisters, Debbie Daniels was delighted when she finally met husband Lee. But their happiness was short-lived when they realised they'd never have a family of their own. With Lee's support, Debbie's now ready to put the past to rest and believes relocating to New Zealand is the key to a happier future. The Daniels now have one week to decide whether uprooting to the other side of the world really is the right move. To reach New Zealand, the Daniels spent 24 hours travelling from London via Dubai. And while Debbie's made the trek down under before, the journey took her a little by surprise. When I came here 10 years ago, I don't remember the flight being quite so long as it was. It was hard work. Husband Lee made the most of his time in the air. Plenty of food, plenty of drinking, good films. The reality of the week ahead has hit home with Debbie. I think looking out of the window when we start coming into land, oh, where are we going, what are we going to be doing, it's sort of the unknown, really. Lee's already convinced they're in New Zealand for the long haul. I'm really positive my bags are almost packed and, uh, yeah, I'm here. A new adventure starts today. But where their future lies is dependent on the next seven days. It's, it's got to be right for both of us. Back in the UK, Debbie and Lee Daniels live in West Sussex with their beloved dog, Merlin. As soon as we saw him, we were like, yeah, yep, that's what we want. Right. We'll, we'll have him, we'll have him. As well, which is good. The couple met online ten years ago and, after a whirlwind romance, Lee decided the time was right for a very decent proposal. I tossed a coin and it was heads or tails whether I did or didn't and I kept tossing the coin until I got the yeses that I needed. <laughs> Debbie and Lee were married in 2008 against the dramatic backdrop of the Arctic Circle in Lapland. I got taken by reindeer in the sleigh down to the Ice Chapel. I wore a traditional wedding dress with a fake fur wrap which didn't really keep me that warm. And I had cold feet legitimately, which was good. Yeah, it was magical, it was freezing, but I would do it again. It was a fairy tale moment for Debbie, who'd witnessed real tragedy in her teens. When I was 18, my mum and stepdad were in, a, in the Purley train crash. Um, unfortunately, my stepdad lost his life, and my mum was hospitalised for a couple of weeks and had sort of major surgery. With two young sisters left without a father, Debbie sacrificed her life as a nanny in London to move home and help out. I tried really hard when they were younger to give them as much as I could. 
We did all the days out, so all the things that they would have done had they had a dad. With her sisters all grown up, Debbie and Lee's marriage marked an exciting new chapter. And the couple were delighted when, after failed IVF, Debbie fell pregnant naturally. Sadly, their joy was short-lived. Unfortunately, we lost that baby and I had to go in for surgery. Um, managed to get pregnant again a couple of times and each of them, we lost both of those babies as well. Very, I mean, it was very early on, but obviously they were still, mm. you know, very special. Oh, I'm going to start me off now. <laughs> um, I'd never even entertained the thought of having children. And the first time that we fell pregnant, it was like I'd won the lottery. It was an amazing feeling. And then when it was taken away from us, it was like being just punched. A difficult few years followed as the couple faced the fact they couldn't have children of their own. Our lives haven't gone the way we thought it would. You know, we, we moved into a home that would be a family home. We bought a car that would be a family car. And it's very hard when everyone else around us seems to be getting the dream that we haven't got. Now, after so much sadness, they're desperate for change. And a brief visit to the country 10 years ago has led Debbie to suggest that could be in New Zealand. The way of life seems easier, but I think it's just very similar, so I don't think it'll be such a culture shock. You'll never forget the bad things that happen in life. They'll always be with you, but I think it might well be a distraction. New Zealand offers possibly the best of everything, really. That was it. But while Lee would jump in feet first, Debbie's dragging her heels, which is becoming a bit of a sticking point. He knows that I'm more worried than he is, and he gets a bit cross sometimes that I'm looking too much into it, I think. Debbie um, is a lot more uh, tentative than I am. She'll want to cross the T's and dot the I's, basically. Topping the list of Debbie's concerns is the thought of giving up her role as a place specialist for children at a local hospital. I love doing the job I do. I give the children 100%. As I know. More than 100%. When I've been at work and seen you with the children, it's incredible how you actually can, um, interact with them and how they relate to you and vice versa. Debbie faces some tough decisions, and there's one part of their lives she definitely won't leave behind. Merlin isn't a replacement for a child, but he is what we've got. He is all we have. You know, he is ours. And he's very special, and he, he knows he is. He's a bit spoiled. Spoiled wrong. After years of heartache, the Daniels now face just seven days to discover whether moving to the other side of the world really can give them the fresh start they deserve. Well, this is a whole life-changing adventure. Other than getting married, this is the biggest thing I've ever done. And I don't know if I can do it. out if life really could be better down under, the Daniels are visiting Auckland on New Zealand's North Island. They're staying in Takapuna, a coastal suburb around seven miles from the city centre. Boasting a beach and stretches of walking trails, the area is a haven for people seeking a more relaxed pace to life. But what will the couple make of their home for the week? Here oh, we go. Just in this one? In you go. Oh. Whoops, it's a bumpy start. Oh, mm. nice little garden. Good oh, deal. Yeah, let's talk about the uh, sort of gargoyle faces. Inside, oh, things fare right. a little better. Oh, my word. Oh, very nice. Oh, oh let's leave them there. Very modern. Decent sized telly as well. Let's go and explore. It doesn't take long before they're feeling at home. Oh, pictures of doggies from Myers and Merlin. Yeah. And after the long journey, there's only one thing for it. Do you want a cup tea of tea? Bag. I'd love a cup of tea, thank you very much. You found sugar? No. <laughs> well, once they find what they need... It's going to take oh, hang a on. Aha, hang on. Outside, Lee's already won over. It's so peaceful, it's what I want in life, peace and quiet. Debbie, on the other hand, can't conceal her concerns. I mean, I've got more fears than you have. I look at the practical side and you're... You're just going to jump feet first, aren't you, really? Finances didn't worry me. 
long as it's no worse in comparison. Well, we have to see. In the UK, the Daniels live in a four-bedroom detached house in the village of Anmering in Sussex, and it's a place they're proud to call their own. It's not a show home. Well, we don't care about that, do we? No, I've always had in my mind the type of home I'd want to live in. This is pretty much it. But a new life down under would mean a new house, and they've dreamt up quite a wish list. A nice outdoor space. Yeah. Barbecue area, yeah. somewhere to put a hot tub, maybe. Cinema room. We're not asking for much. If they do move, the couple's budget to buy a house in New Zealand is £350,000. I'm hoping, rightly or wrongly, that when we walk into the properties out there, they have the wow factors. Today, we'll show Debbie and Lee three properties, one of which could be their dream home. Only after they've seen each house will they find out its value. The couple are exploring suburbs on Auckland's North Shore, a much sought-after area for those wanting coastal living. But how far will their money stretch? To kick things off, the couple head for Milford. Despite being only seven miles from the city centre, the area has a village feel and having a beach makes it a great fit for dog lovers like the Daniels. Oh, this is it. So will this north-facing brick house get their search off to a good start? Nice well-kept grass. Well, yeah, it's maintainable. Hopefully inside is in good nick too. OK. Oh, long corridor. That's nice. Right, into the first room. Fairly small lounge compared to ours. Yeah. So, but as long as you can get your telly on the wall. Yeah, that telly can go there. <laughs> now that's resolved, it's on to the kitchen dining area. Yeah. Mm. A little bit compact, but... Adequate. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd have to downsize our furniture. But there could be more space than they think. Right, it's into this corridor, which Ooh. does remind me of a Doctor Who. Yeah, you could sort of open this door and there'd be... Fantasy world or... Yeah, I was thinking more aliens. It's not very friendly. Looking. Now Debbie's brought them back down to Earth, they check out the master bedroom. Yeah, the whole property is a little bit outdated for what we've seen so far. It's 40 odd years old, so yeah, it's, it, it needs a bit of a... Let's tend to love and care. Perhaps DIY loving Lee could give it a spruce up. I think the... you can definitely work on it. By the third bedroom, though, Debbie's lost heart. There's not a lot to be done. You could move straight in. Yeah, I wouldn't move in. <laughs> in the hallway, Lee finds something to cause alarm. Look at that electric. I'd have a fit if that was in our house. God. Hopefully outside will give them less cause for concern. Well, look at that, it's grapevine, look. We can make our own wine, New Zealand wine. I think you need a bit more than those. I think the garden is actually the best bit. But is it enough to change their view? Yeah, too dated, too small. It doesn't give you that tingly feeling that I like to get. The house hasn't tickled their fancy. How much do they think it costs? I don't think I'd pay more than about 280. Yeah, you sort of look at 280, 300,000 pounds worth. Are you ready? You go on then. <laughs> yeah. £393,000. Thanks. That's around £40,000 over budget. There must be something we don't know, obviously. I was going to say, <laughs> perhaps you get eternal youth or something from the air. Based on this price, uh, yeah. I don't think we could afford to move. No. What time's the flight back to the UK? Yeah. <laughs> It's not the best start, but before Debbie packs her bags, there are two more houses next. to view. To the next one. Hopefully, the next one will be more to their liking. It's situated in Torbay, a more rural suburb around 30 miles from central Auckland. With several beaches and a regional park on its doorstep, the area can offer the Daniels the leisurely lifestyle they're after. Driveway? Okay. But will this three-bedroom house be enough to ward off some of Debbie's doubts? Burglars be warned. Yeah. Of what? Merlin. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting my tingle. Hey. Getting tingling. Definitely a good sign. Ah ha! Oh, yeah. No, that's much better. Much more much open. More, yeah, and more spacious. We can actually get our furniture. Yeah, definitely. Well, we need a bit more furniture, possibly. Oh. 
With more space to play with, will the kitchen get a thumbs up too? Certainly a bigger, better kitchen than the previous one. To be quite honest, I think I'd remodel the kitchen. Hopefully the yeah. master bedroom is more up to spec. Bedroom! Oh, I've spotted look. something. Haha, <laughs> walking wardrobe. <laughs> It's far away from the um, lounge and everything, yeah. so that it can actually be quite peaceful. Yeah, separate area for if you have an argument. Surely not, Lee. Well, actually, have a look in here. Is this going to be? On, is this going to be good or bad? Drum is roll this... for this one. Oh. Okay. Mm. Debbie doesn't sound convinced. Bigger than one at home. Oh yeah, no, it's big. Just needs updating. Mm. Moving outside. What have we got here? A Merlin's area. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what it is. At least it's an area that's closed off for him to run around in. Debbie's not sold, but Lee spots something to lighten the mood. I haven't seen one of those windmill things for years. And the old man goes. <laughs> you like that. <laughs> With the back garden falling short, the couple take a closer look at what's out front. This is actually nicer, shape. I think, than the other side. No, I could quite happily sit out here in the evening. Tropical plants as well. The bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise, that's the one. I can't remember the Italian name, but... Latin bird name, Dio Latin Paradiso. Molto bene, Lee. But will the price of the house roll off the tongue as easily? I'm going to say 325. I'm going to go a lot less than the last property. 325. Mm, OK, 345. Time to turn the card. £428,000. Clicks. That's almost £80,000 over budget. Nice, it's but nice. it's not amazing. I would rather downsize at home than yeah. actually move all this way and risk everything. Debbie's losing faith. Can a property three get things back on track? It looks, the area looks like it's worth the money because it looks very clean, it looks very tidy. For the final viewing, the couple head for the area of Forest Hill, a popular suburb just eight miles from the city centre. Nearby beaches and a park said to be one of Auckland's most popular for dog walking make it ideal for the Daniels. We think this modern three-bedroom house could be their dream home. Question is, will they agree? Ah, oh, this looks good. Shall we go and have a, a peruse? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, very nice. Oh, yes. Very sort of designer-ish. Modern. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've got the same feeling when we moved into our house. So far, so good. Dining area. Yeah. we have still got a table in, but then most of the time, you'd be out there. This is 100 times better than the other two. It is, but that also means the price could be... Yeah, Could exactly. be way up there. Yeah. You know, you fall in love with something new. That's a fact. You can't afford. Cautious but curious, they check out the kitchen. Very nice. So they've got work surface like we have. Yeah, it's got yeah, the spin sparkly bit. bits. You'd have to just rejig it a little bit. What if we wanted like the American fridge freezer? Might fit in there, just mm. take out a cupboard. Debbie's already redesigning. Not that clock, that's well funky. That's the clock comes with the house. By the clock in the house could be free. Not sure it works like that, Lee. It's the first house that we've actually that's had true. to go upstairs. Well, that's true. Yeah. Things are looking up. Bedroom. Oh, it's oh. bigger than I think, actually. Oh, yeah. I like the funky uh, triangle window. And your challenge would be get a blind for the triangle window. Mm. <laughs> Will the bathroom shape up nicely, too? Ah, oh, now that's better. That's proper. It's certainly big, isn't it? Mm. I wouldn't want to change it. It's be fun. No, you wouldn't need to change it. Hopefully the master bedroom will be to their taste too. This is definitely what we're talking about. It's sort of like canvas really, isn't it? But mm. oh, and it's got an ensuite. Look at the size of it, it's ginormous. Yeah, that's mine. Where's that's yours? Your, I use the main bathroom. <laughs> it's much better. Every box has been ticked so far. And there's more to come. Back. The added feature of a balcony is sure to impress. This is glorious. Knowing what an impetuous person I am. This would be it. I mean, the house is a big part, but yeah, the jobs and everything else are also a major part. If you tick all the boxes, all the other bits and pieces, then this would be the, the icing on the cake. 
Could the back garden be the cherry on top? I can just see us sitting out here with a glass or something or other with our dinner and people around the table. Property 3 is proving popular with the Daniels, but with £350,000 to spend, can they really afford the dream house? Well, I'm going to go for four seventy. It's less than the last one. Yeah, but I think different area. I'm going for the surprise. OK, you ready? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. £490,000. That's almost £150,000 over budget. I'm going to cry on telly. No. <laughs> Reality is, we can't afford houses in the areas we're looking in. So it comes to the point where we know how much we're going to earn. If we're suddenly going to earn double what we earn now, then it's, it is achievable. Lee's hopeful, but Debbie's feet are staying firmly on the ground. It's going to be the whole package, not just the house. The reality of New Zealand property prices has been a real eye-opener for the Daniels. Property One was only slightly over budget, but too cramped and dated for Debbie and Lee. The higher price tag of Property Two meant more space indoors, but it fell short outdoors. The final property proved the potential dream home for Lee, but coming in well over budget put it financially out of reach for now. So, based on their day of house hunting, will they opt for New Zealand or the UK? New Zealand! Undecided. Oh. <laughs> but I'm surprised that you went undecided. I'm not 100% either way, so oh. I've gone for the... Wow. You never know, you never oh. know. Could Debbie's undecided vote be a sign of trouble on the horizon? Or will a day exploring employment opportunities give her the confidence she needs to pursue the couple's dream move down under? Back in the UK, Lee has spent almost 30 years working as an alarm service engineer. And over the years, I've met some wonderful customers and built up a great rapport with them. You know, you go in there, do the job, and then have a cup of tea and a biscuit and a good chat. Debbie is equally as fulfilled in her role as a play specialist for children on a hospital burns ward. So every day um, I come in and meet as many children as I can. They're all in here waiting for surgery or treatments. I just seem to be able to help them in their day to day worries. But while Lee's ready for the new opportunities New Zealand might bring... I've recently inquired becoming a retained firefighter. I think it's a fantastic occupation, and I'd hope to look into that, possibly in New Zealand as well. Debbie won't find changing jobs so easy. I love working here, and it's going to have to be a very good place to move to that will take me away. A move to New Zealand is dependent on the couple finding jobs they'd both be happy with. Getting the right job with the right sort of benefits is a major, major part of this. Not being any worse off than we would be in the UK. We've arranged for Lee to visit a security firm in central Auckland, where he's met by Director of Human Resources, Robin Pope. Welcome, Lee. Nice Hi. to meet you. Thank you very Come much. Outside. Lee wastes no time in finding out if his skills will be recognised. Your experience and your qualifications are quite transferable into New Zealand. We run on the same electrical platform, so that would actually be quite a nice fit for you. That's good news. Next, Lee wants to know about work hours. He currently works around 37 and a half hours per week. The hours of work is 40 hours a week. I guess it would be the same as in the UK. Is a call out? There's quite, it is, yeah. People don't necessarily only need a security company between 8.30 and 5. So our guys are on a call-out roster and they take turns and actually responding to the customers. Lee's used to working out of hours occasionally, but the longer week isn't the kind of change he was hoping for. Meanwhile, as Debbie's job is less common in New Zealand, we've arranged for her to visit a charity, providing support to families with children in hospital. Back in the UK, I work with 
children and their families on a one-to-one -one basis. Here, I think it'd be a lot more working with siblings. It'd be interesting to see if I can transfer my skills. Come on through. Thank you. Obviously play. After an initial tour of the centre. It's, it's a really welcome distraction. Debbie chats with the charity's director, Anne Kirkpatrick, and she's anxious to learn more about the family liaison role she could be eligible for. It's really important for them to actually sit down with the family initially, understand what's happening, what the child's uh, clinical situation is, and then figuring out how best we can support them while they're here. How would my skills sort of transfer over to working in this role? The transferable skills that are so essential that I see you have are the compassion for families, compassion for the children, and understanding what they're going through. One of the things Debbie finds most rewarding about her job is providing care for sick children. So is it possible to work with children one-on-one? -on -one? You do have a lot of interaction with children in your day-to-day -day, um, dealings, but not from a um, therapeutical of a situation, really. In this role, Debbie would support the siblings and parents of children receiving hospital treatment. But knowing she wouldn't be as hands-on with patients could be a major stumbling block. Back at the security firm, Lee's hoping for support with a personal career goal. In the UK, I've looked into becoming a retained firefighter. Is that something as a company you support? Well, we are a fire and security company, and the yeah. fire service is one of our customers, mm -hmm. and we have a number of volunteer fire um, fighters on mm. our books at the moment as, as staff. Mm. That's promising. Now the all-important question. So what sort of salary would I be looking at as an engineer? So we have people earning anything from 55000 New Zealand dollars per annum to about 65000 New Zealand. Lee could earn up to £30,000, £5,000 more than his current salary. But what are his chances of getting a job? Security itself is a growing industry, so there's always growth for security mm. and always growth for tradespeople. Back at the charity, will Debbie's earning potential give her more to be hopeful about? Anything between 50 and 70,000 New Zealand dollars for a full-time role, which is 40 hours a week. She could earn around 34,000 pounds a year. That's over 10,000 pounds more than her UK salary. It might not be the perfect fit, but how likely would it be for Debbie to secure work? When I look at CVs, first and foremost, you know, do they have that compassion? Are they warm and open people? And I, I certainly get that from you from the time we spent together. So, yeah, I think you'd have a good chance. With their meetings over, the pair reunite in the park to discuss the day. So, did you get any idea of how much you'd be earning? Be a, a bit more than normal. now. So, enough to, enough to buy our dream house? Maybe not the ones we've seen. How many sort of hours would you be working? It's 40 hour a week, so that's more. If I wanted to do the volunteer firefighting, then um, they support that as well. No, that's good. They've, that's already got, well, they've already got people doing it. And how was your day? It's a whole sort of different job. You're still working with families and the children, but you're not so hands on with the actual sick child. It's a sort of complete change, really. So when it comes to work opportunities, which way will the couple vote? Undecided. UK. I'm really surprised. I thought you'd say yes. <laughs> I don't really see anything different at the moment work-wise. OK. I think yours was a foregone conclusion. No, not necessarily. Yeah, if you could walk in for exactly the same job as you're doing now, then I think you would have gone straight onto it. I think I may have been undecided, oh. possibly, but yeah. With neither Debbie nor Lee satisfied they'd find jobs they'd be happy with, the prospect of working in New Zealand has left them questioning a move. Hopefully, a day sizing up the active outdoor lifestyle they're aiming for will be enough to get the dream back on track. <laughs> Debbie and Lee head to Waitamuta Clay Target Club in North Auckland for a morning of clay target shooting, an activity Lee loves to do at home. Well, shotgun. Very lethal. 
in the wrong hand. First, a safety briefing. It. When you're not holding it, if you want to put it in the stand. You can help me as we go. That would be great. <laughs> Novice Debbie might need a little encouragement. Lee's quick to show off his metal, and this time together triggers Debbie's adventurous side too. Fat. I'm ready. Well done. Next, we've arranged for the couple to meet up with expats Scott and Lenny Clogg and their dog Chili at Little Shoal Bay near central Auckland. With introductions out of the way, it's time for a coffee at one of the city's many dog-friendly cafes. Are you going to bring Merlin out to New Zealand? If we can't bring Merlin, we don't come. We've if, said that all along. Even me who's keen to be here now, if Merlin can't come, then we're not. Yeah, we don't do it. Deb has had more reservations than Lee throughout the week and wonders how easy the couple found it to settle in. It is really like living in England, but slightly warmer and yeah. slightly smaller. But if Merlin was here with you, I think you guys would love this lifestyle. For Lee, New Zealand represents new beginnings. Moving out here would be a whole new start for us, obviously. Um, and the chance to maybe start our relationship again. We've only been together for 10 years, so we've missed out on a lot of time together. But he recognises what a move would mean giving up. Leaving the job I'm in and Debbie leaving her job, you're leaving behind almost a legacy, the customers you've built up and her with her patience. It's, it's taking pride in what you do and leaving that behind, it would make me think about it. Debbie's hesitant about making the dream a reality too. I know we've come all this way to try it, but I'm still not sure. I need a job and a house, I think. Once I've got those things, then possibly. As much as she wants change, Debbie admits the week so far has been quite overwhelming. I'm scared. What we've got at home, I love. And if we could bring that here, then I think I'd feel quite secure. Yeah, I'm just not sure which way we're gonna go. A tough decision lies ahead of them. For now, the couple have to decide on the lifestyle they prefer, New Zealand or the UK. So what was good today for you? I think you can't take away that the weather here is fantastic. The people we met this morning were lovely, very welcoming. I knew you'd go for it. Time together for you and me and Bernie. A first vote for New Zealand from Debbie could mean all is not lost, but a new life down under has to make financial sense. To fund a move, the couple plan to sell their home, which they think is worth around £375,000. To see if they're right, we sent two estate agents round, and Debbie and Lee are about to hear their opinions. Really good storage in the hallway. Lovely sized south facing lounge with a bay window. Bit messy. Mm. <laughs> this is a well laid out garden, good deck and air at the back with a hot tub, of course. That looks messy as well. This is a great sized double bedroom. Nice big bay window, good wardrobes of storage, and the ensuite as well is very handy. This is actually a really good sized room, but there's lots of furniture in it, so I would recommend, if selling, to declutter slightly to make it feel bigger. Yeah, that's all your stuff. Modern fitted white bathroom suite, quite small. Cheeky. In today's market, I value this property at £425,000. For a quick sale, I value the property at £415,000. I like it. I would value this house at £400,000. For a quick sale, I value this house at £385,000. Yeah, I still don't know if that would afford us any of the houses we looked at, but it's obviously a yeah. step in the right direction. It is definitely a step in the right direction. 
With that encouraging news, the couple sit down to consider other costs. To help, we've provided them with a cost of living comparison and first to get the once over is the weekly grocery shop. Potatoes, we buy a bag for like £1.75. Yeah. And here it's pretty much double. Well, there's a market, we'll start growing potatoes. Okay, dog feed. We spend on roughly about £32. And here, £18.94. Come to the worst, we can eat each food. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, Lee. A quick tot up of the figures reveals. £5 cheaper, near enough. So with the grocery, it's a positive. Yeah, it's around a pound a penny account and it's not that much difference. Next, they look at bigger monthly bills, starting with mortgage repayments, basing the figures on the second property they viewed. £872 difference. So it's pretty much doubling what we pay. OK, mobile phones. So £50 cost in the UK, £39.24 mm -hmm. here. So it's minus, a bit cheaper minus here. Minus Overall, they'd be paying out over £100 more each month in New Zealand. Mm. It could be better, but it could be worse. Moving on to look at salaries, they discover together they'd earn over £1,000 more per month and Deb is taken aback by her potential pay increase. For me, that's mm. a considerable amount, £701. Well, you're twice, pounds. Nearly twice as much as me. You'd be earning more than me. And their higher income makes a big difference when they work out overall they'd be £700 a month better off in New Zealand. No, I thought we were going to be minus, actually, mm. all the way along. It's almost a no-brainer, isn't it? But it's not so clear-cut for Debbie. If I couldn't get a job, my choice of what I wanted to do. You can still do the potential job that you've seen as a stopgap for a couple of years until the right job comes along. I think for me, the, the actual persuading thing to come over here would be to actually get a job in something I love. So we could basically throw away all of this. No, you're getting stroppy. And my point is, you would give up all of this because of your job. Possibly, yeah. There are still questions to be answered before the couple can decide on their future. For now, though, they have to choose between finances in New Zealand and the UK. New Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> Any extra money a month is a bonus, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how I saw it. How about you? Yeah, no-brainer. New Zealand has passed the financial test for the couple, but messages from friends and family could prove to be a bridge too far. I think this is the bit I've been dreading, to be honest. You've got your tissues um, ready. I've got, I've got one tissue, I'm hoping that's enough. No one's that be enough. <laughs> OK, should we have a look? Yeah, so everyone's, what everyone's going to say. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lee. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Hello, Hi, Debbie, Debbie and Lee. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lee. Hello, Auntie Debbie and Uncle Lee. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I've known Lee for the best part of 20 years, so he's he's always been about about anything that needs doing. He's very practical, very handy. Debbie is my second eldest daughter. When the two younger daughters lost their father and I was injured, she helped me out a lot with Tiffany and Danielle. Debbie has spent a lot of her life looking after people and I think she sacrificed personal dreams to do that and I think it's about time that she started thinking about what she wants for once. Yes. She will never appreciate how much she'll be missed because she doesn't think she's that important. She doesn't realise just what a fantastic person she is. Debbie and Lee are hoping to maybe start afresh and get away from a lot of things that have gone horribly for them because they've been through a really hard few years. On the other hand, something so personal it doesn't matter where you are, you take it with you. You can't get away from it. I think you should really make a go of it and be happy. We want you to be happy and we'd be behind you in every step of the way. If it's not right for them, fine. But if it is right for them, they must do it. They must, they must do this for themselves. 
follow your head, listen to your heart and do what's right, I think you should go for it. No one has to go. I don't want you to go. However, if that's what makes you happy, then obviously you've got my full support, both of you. And good luck making a decision. Yes, good luck. Bye. Bye. That was all very, um... This is what I expected from most people. What my mum said was absolutely how I'm thinking, mm. I think. You know, are we escaping? Are we just running away? Although largely encouraging, messages from loved ones have affirmed the void Lee and Debbie would be leaving at home if they do decide to move, and reminded them that no matter where they go, the past is sure to follow. So as their final decision draws closer, will the couple conclude their future lies at home or away? It's been a mixed week for the couple down under, and Debbie is battling with a decision in front of her. Maybe this is the place we should come to and make our dream a reality, but maybe we can make our home life better. She worries Lee's enthusiasm to move is masking a desire to escape their past. And we still get upset from time to time, you know, when people have children and what have you, and it's still, you know, an emotional, um, an emotional thing. And I think possibly Lee thinks by coming here, you know, we're going to live one big happy life. We love our house, we love where we live, and we've got the good friends and the family around us. Um, but maybe there's something different, something missing that we might have here. There's a big part of me that wants to go home. There's a big part of me that thinks, you know, let's have an adventure, do something different. I'm feeling more confused than ever. So, knowing all they stand to lose and gain, the couple now have to choose which path they'll follow. Will it be New Zealand or the UK? New Zealand. UK. There was a little bit of a hesitation for me but I think there's just too much pull at the moment for the UK. I don't know what the job means to you now, I guess. Now I almost feel like I'm letting you down. Well, and vice versa. So, did we just spend six months in either? Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> a good idea. New Zealand has delivered mixed reactions from the Daniels. And while Lee still feels it's somewhere they could be happy, Debbie's less certain the grass will be any greener on the other side of the world. Wherever they decide to call home, we wish them a long and happy future together. This afternoon, alien sightings cause chaos in Kemblford and the perfect cover for a crime. Father Brown at 1.45. Then it's quiz time, coining it in if they can identify the impossible answers at 2.30 and escape to Lorna Dune country, North Devon, with us at 3.15 here on BBC One.